well, and I think, Lord, uh, things keep going the way they're going with the younger generation. Where are we going to be in 10 years if Jesus does not come? I think, my, again, my body believes, I think, Lord, where is our church going to be when all these people that I mentioned, they're not going to be here in 10 years? Who is going to take Brother Max's shoes and fill Miss Rosie's shoes? And who's going to be the next Dennis Fulwiler around our church? And I think, dear God, if you don't do something yeah. in the hearts of this generation, we are in 
there was no division. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place. Notice the description of the leader here in verse number 2. The Bible says, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. You know what had happened to the leader, the spiritual leader of the nation of Israel, Eli? He had lost his what? Just leave all this behind. But God, beyond that, raise, raise God. I've seen 
that, uh, do that. Maurice, and he said, why do you pray that way? Listen, I don't want to pastor a church that isn't burning. I, yeah. Or isn't burning bright. Now listen, realize that the younger yeah. generation, that's who keeps it really burning bright. And we need it. And we need it desperately. So we notice the dimness of the lamp. But finally, there's some points with this. Don't get too excited. But finally, this morning, number four, in light of all what's going on in this passage that we've noticed so far, notice what the Lord decides to do in verse number three and four. Notice number four, the decision. The decision of the Lord. The Bible says in air. Again, that word it means before. The lights were dim. The lights were flickering. And the Bible says in air, the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Notice the decision of the Lord. The Bible says that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here am I. Right before the lights went out, God knew they were flickering. The Lord knew they were about to go out. And right before they did, you know what God did in order to keep them on? He called a young child. That's good. Yeah. He called Samuel. Yes. You know what I believe God wants to do even this week? You know what I believe God will do? I believe God wants to do that and will do that this week. Amen. And that's what I'm praying this morning that God will do. Amen. I'm praying that God would help you to understand that you Amen. have a major responsibility. Yes, sir. And pretty soon it's going to be shifted on you. Whether this goes or whether this doesn't go, is it going to be on the older generation anymore? It's going to be on every single one of you. And I'm concerned with how you're going to respond to the call to keep the lights on. And God is definitely, listen, I'm not talking male, I'm not talking preacher, I'm talking, I'm talking about all of you. You all, you ladies just as well, these boys, you have a responsibility if the lights are going to stay on. Amen. If this style of biblical Christianity that we believe is right, amen, amen. right, that we believe is biblical, if it's going to go on, it's going to go on if you pick it up and carry it on. If you don't, it is going to go out. Now listen, by the grace of God, on purpose, as far as my responsibility, I purpose to keep it burning. Amen? I'm afraid some of you don't even think about it. Some of you don't even care about it. And I know this morning that God is dealing with 
not just his age, not just his actions, not just an advisor, but I want you to notice this in verse number four. I want you to underline it. You've got a minute. You don't already have underlined. Notice more than what they've all about this call to keep the lights on. Notice how he responds and see in verse number four is available. Notice his availability. When God speaks to him, even as a child, he responds this way in verse number four. Now it says that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Say that I would be pleased. Here am I. Notice again Samuel's availability. When the Lord called, he made himself available, available to the Lord. Now listen, I've already clarified for all of you that God is calling all of you. Yeah. He is calling all of you, you young ladies, you young men. He is calling all of you to keep the lights on. Listen, if you're paying, if you have any spiritual discernment at all, if you're paying any attention, you can see that things are not getting better. Things are not getting brighter. I look around in the world, look at the direction we're headed. It's getting darker. Darker. Who's going to keep the lights on but God's people? This way. But listen, those who have been doing it so long, they're fading. And as they fade, so the light flickers. Because we don't have young people stepping up when God does call them. They're not hearing the call. They're not heeding the call. Upon the call of God, he answers just like some of you need to answer this week. Right. God, Lord, you want me? You made it evident clearly you do. Here, here am I. My question to you this morning is this, young people. Very simple thought. Very brief this morning. I want you to consider Ask yourself this question, would you be willing to make yourself available? It's good for you. God is asking you, he's asking all you young men, would you be willing to make yourself available? Would you at least consider responding and answering the call like Samuel answered the call? I read this quote somewhat recently, and the statement was this. The statement said that God doesn't use people because of their ability. And I rejoice in that. <laughs> I rejoice yeah. that probably more than most. Yeah. Say why? Because I ain't got none. <laughs> but you know the blessing is? This is kind of a side note. I found out that I don't need it. I found out I need God. Amen. 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 You got God, you don't have to worry about talent. You got God, you don't have to worry about tools. You don't have to worry about charisma, personality, being a good joke. You don't have to worry about any of that. You got God. Amen? Right? So God doesn't use people because of their ability. Hear me clearly here, please. God uses people because of their availability. Yeah, he did. You say, is it really that simple? Yeah. Is God really that hard up? Yes. Amen. Case in point. <laughs> Come on. You know what? You know, listen, I don't say this boastfully, but I can't. I can't God, is, God is using my life to a, to a point. Right. I'm thankful for that. No greater privilege than to be used with God. You know, you know what a servant really is? You know a biblical definition of a servant? A, a servant is somebody that God uses to accomplish his purposes. What else would you rather be used for than to accomplish God's purposes? Yeah. What a blessing. Listen, consider this, young people. God wants to use you to accomplish his purposes. Amen. Regardless of your inability or whatever you want to excuse yourself with, listen, God wants to use in spite of that because God can use anybody that will make Come on. himself Amen. Available.
He said, hear my, send me. Yeah. You know, God is calling out in Psalm 94, verse 16. The Lord speaks and says, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Anybody? Yeah. Is there anybody that would make themselves available? I'm looking for somebody that will stand up against evildoers and against the workers of iniquity. Is there anybody that would make themselves available? Any Christian young people this morning that would say, God, here am I. Send me. God, here am I. Yep. God, here I am making myself available. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. And to consider, and to consider the thought. Oh, to consider the thought. Listen, I'm not a I'm not the most dynamic. But listen, that's the Bible. That's my burden this morning. I'm worried, I'm worried about where we're headed if Jesus doesn't come. And I'm worried that some of you aren't even worried. And most of you young people are not worried in the least. But some of you need to get a burden. Some of you need to care enough about the generations coming up after you. Are they going to have a temple where the lights are going to be on? Are they going to have a church that's burning bright? Are they going to have a youth group to grow up and become a part of us? on fire for God? Could you at least, young person, could you at least make yourself a man here? God, listen, let me be honest with you. God needs you. And God, beyond that, God wants you. God wants to use you to accomplish His purpose. Why don't you let Him? Amen? Why don't you let Him? Why don't you embrace this thing once and for all? Commit to it once and for all. Sell out once and for all. I tell you, it's amazing what God can do with people that just simply, that just simply make themselves available to Him. That's all He's asking. That's what His call is. Who will go? Who can I send? Who can I use? How about you, young boys? God use you. God's asking for you. Young ladies, God's asking for you. How do you respond this morning? No oh, thanks, God. I'm not really that concerned about it. I really don't give any thought to the future. I don't even care about the future. Hey, listen, you ought to. Lord, Jeremy, you're going to have a family someday. Amen? Could you at least make yourself available? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, please use this simple thought this morning. Lord, I believe with all my heart it was indeed what you ordered through service. God, it's what you dealt with me about. God, I pray you'd use it, Lord, please. The hearts of some. God, the lights, spiritual lights are clicking at best, God. Growing ever dimmer by the year, by the day. God, I pray help these young people to see it. God, help them to see this tradition that we're in. God, please help them understand that God, you want to use them to do something about it. Lord, help them understand that all they have to do is just make themselves available. Lord, it's amazing. You read through Samuel's life as it's recorded in the Word of God. It's amazing how you used it. And Lord, there was really nothing special about him. God, there was in a sense of you know, his upbringing, but God, beyond that, Lord, what was special about him is just how you used him. God, you used him to the extent that you did simply because he made himself available. God, I want you to use me. God, I want to be used with you, even as an adult, God, desperately. Be used with you to keep the lights burning, to keep them burning bright. In our church and ministry, in our community, God, please challenge.